Hello and welcome to The Film Whisperers on Ben TV, where two movie nerds talk all things film with a contemporary lens. My name is Sarge. And my name is Matthew. So, how's it going? Um, yeah, not too bad. It yeah. feels like, at least here in Melbourne, things are starting to kind of crawl back to normal. See, how, how are you going? Yeah, really good. Uh, nice socks. That's, uh, oh, yeah. Yes. I don't know if you can catch these on the <laughs> thing. You've got some funky socks yes, as well. Yes, it's got extra spicy. Yes, we both love Only the socks. best um, dressed for Ben TV. Yes. So what, what are we here for today? What are we chatting about today? Yeah, so Matt, um, it's been 10 years since uh, 2011, obviously, mm -hmm. and I thought um, maybe we could talk about 2011 in film. Um, a lot has happened in the last 10 years, um, quite a few monumental moments mm -hmm. uh, in pop culture and in the world. And I thought, how about we have a look at some of those important films from 2011 and look at them in a contemporary lens. What are your thoughts on that? That's a really good idea, especially because like 10 years doesn't sound like a long time ago. But yeah. in the last 10 years, I mean, even COVID aside, yeah. all these different movements have happened yeah. and shifts in like the way people see different things. So movies that came out in 2011 like just had a very different some at least would have a very yeah. different perspective on the world that we have today so yeah. i think it's a great idea great so let's just you know do the usual which is mm -hmm. uh, what we what we liked what we didn't like in the wtf yeah yeah so we'll start off with the movies best. that came out in 2011 that we thought were great They're and great, still yeah. hold up today right yeah um so what would be what would be your pick uh, I've got to say Bridesmaids is mm -hmm. going to be mine. Um, I recently watched it uh, about two weeks ago um, and I, th I still thought it was really funny. Mm -hmm. uh, the this, this script, it still holds up to 2021 mm -hmm. standards. Uh, Kristen Wiig is just this amazing comedic actress uh, and I think it was interesting because I am now the age of those characters wow. in the film, yeah. right? And when I watched it 10 years ago, I wasn't. So to me, 10 years ago, I was watching it going, oh, you know, this is what it feels like when all your friends are getting married and, you know, you're the one that's left out. Uh, and I'm not saying that that's me now, mm -hmm. but it's just an interesting view of, well, that's probably what a lot of my girlfriends are going through, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you get to your mid-30s. So have you revisited it recently? Yes, and yes, so yes. so watching it now, did you, I mean, you obviously still enjoyed it, but yes. did you feel differently? Like, did you have a different kind of appreciation? Yeah, look, I think um, when it comes to representation, uh, especially with uh, people of colour, Maya, Maya Rudolph is the only person of colour in it. And um, I, I'm, I, I think the two screenwriters, um, I'm not sure, I know Kristen Wiig's one of them, mm -hmm. and um, I can't remember the name of this, the her co-writer, she was the one who did Barb and Star, the new yeah, yeah. any kind of her surname, yeah. but anyway, um, and I feel like there were moments in there where Maya Rudolph uh, put on a black scent, uh, and I think that was—I don't know whether that was her or whether that was part of the script. Uh, so maybe in terms of racial representation, it was a bit lacking. But you know, just just taking that aside, um, I really didn't find anything inappropriate as much. It was just this really, really great representation of female friendship. Uh, the, you know, I remember at the time, um, you know, the, you know the, the infamous, the infamous scene, you know, the one with the the, the diarrhea in yeah. in the, the the change room. It was the, <laughs> it was this thing where I remember the commentary was, oh, it's nice to see a film where girls are shown as disgusting because a lot of the time toilet humor is attributed Reserve to men. men. Yeah, mm -hmm. and again, you're just watching it now. It's it's just hilarious. It's yeah. it's it's funny. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's the, the the cameo by Wilson Phillips that just add to its tackiness. And you know, let's face it, Melissa. McCarthy, who in my heart will always be Suki St. James uh, yeah. <laughs> because of Gilmore Girls. You know, this was that film that catapulted her into mm -hmm. a, a Hollywood A-lister. That's so true. Like, in the last yeah. decade, she's been in all these big, like, A-list like, A yeah, movies. Yes, two Oscar nominations, including mm -hmm. Bridesmaids. She got nominated mm -hmm. for Best Supporting Actress. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot that that film did for Hollywood, in my opinion. I think at the time it made it okay for Hollywood to greenlight these films with such a broad female cast. Well, that's what I was going to say as well. It's like, I love the movie, but like my favorite thing about it, I think, is that, you know, for so long, there's like this like ridiculous myth that people like or a lot of, you know, sexist people are like women aren't as funny as men. And I'm like, this movie to me is like just a big middle finger to those people because it's like absolutely hilarious yeah. with an all female cast. Yeah. Hollywood does go through uh, phases like that where it's like they need something to be incredibly successful for producers to kind of open their eyes and go, huh, mm -hmm. this actually works. Because I think from a from a racial point of view, a uh, couple of years ago, Crazy Rich Asians was the bridesmaids mm -hmm. for uh, people, you know, for, I guess, um, the Asian community. 
and all of a sudden now, you know, you have people like Aquafina, who's who's really big. Yeah, well, or Minari, like now yes, it's a lot more cor- popular. Sorry, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think Bridesmaids, um, in my opinion, gave that gave it okay for filmmakers mm-hmm. to invest in female-led films. So anyway, enough about that. Now you yeah. tell me what's I, I, yours. Yeah. Yeah. I totally talk about Bridesmaids forever. I know it's exactly right. Yeah. My choice for this one is a bit more as an indie movie, but I just love it so much, and I could watch it like a hundred times and not get sick of it. Um, it's called Young Adults. Charlie Theron. With Charlie Theron. Yeah. Um, and it's written by Diablo Cody, who also wrote the screenplay for Juno, which many people probably know a lot more. Yeah. Um, it's basically just on a basic level about an older, a middle-aged woman, I guess, or no, so she's probably like in her late twenties, early thirties, who decides to go, you know, kind of doing okay, like in a big city somewhere, and she decides to go back to her hometown, um, and she kind of lords it a bit over like her old classmates like tries to like it's Keanu Reeves isn't it or is it John Hamm Some, who plays the yeah. love interest I'm trying to remember the love interest it's neither of them Okay, right. but I just remember she's kind of like trying to put this up this facade that she's like super successful and she's done all this stuff I think the reality is she's written like a children's book or something all these people that are from her hometown they're just, it's just it's very funny so it's a, fu- it's a comedy um, but the writing is just so sharp and so good and again I just anything that Jebel Cody writes I just, I'm, I'm into it right um, she also wrote another movie after that called Tully, which also starred Charlie Strong, which was um, brilliant as well. Um, but I think that's just a good example of like a woman-led indie movie um, that actually was quite successful. That well, I, maybe in a similar way to Bridesmaids opened up the doors of the last decade to a number of indie movies that kind of were women-led, yeah. and particularly around like you know younger women um, like navigating life. You know they don't quite have necessarily all their shit together, but they're like you know just trying to navigate everything and they do it in kind of a dark or kind of humorous mm-hmm. way um yeah i just have you seen it i, I have i have you know, know i did i did see it um i th- I, oh, I really struggled with um charlie Theron's character because i thought um in, in a lot of ways uh the character the way it was written was quite problematic mm. um if i remember right now you know going back a few years obviously yeah. 10 uh, to be specific but um she does try to break uh, right. A family up, doesn't she? Uh, and I, I remember thinking, okay, this is this is a bit problematic. Uh, and I think she really goes to uh, like the extra efforts to sabotage this man's. That's right. Uh, yeah. So she's got kind of like her high school sweetheart or someone that she pined for in high school. And part of the reason why she goes back, that's right, is so she can win him over. But he's now got like a family and a wife, and he's not interested. Like he's got his life. Yeah. Um, so she's a very like she's supposed to be an unlikable character. Yeah. Um, and she was. And she definitely was. Yeah. Um, which is why I think I found it quite entertaining too, because like I guess through the movie, like for the most part, you don't like her, but you do see this kind of progression. Yeah. But where by the end, you're like, you're actually they managed to get you on side by the end. Yeah. So. Can I also just um, say, Charlize Theron, um, she's a phenomenal actress, mm. and um, you know she's done so many roles. And here's an example of she can actually play a role that's quite unlikable and be so good at it and you know you've seen monster right? amazing yeah. yeah exactly and and that's i remember that being referred to as one of the greatest performances in the history of cinema mm-hmm. and then you know you see this you see tully it's just yeah. you know it's just uh, mad max you know where a uh, fury wrote she's amazing she's she's Absolutely amazing, and I think that was why that was the good thing about the film. Where it's like, even though the character was problematic, she was great. You still get drawn to her, like even yeah. if you don't necessarily like the character, she's just such a yeah, an amazing actress. So, what what was the um, the first film that Diablo Cody? So you said there was Tully, there was this, and what was the other? Oh, one? Juno was kind of oh, like right. The okay, most yeah, know. yeah. Um, so I she actually, yeah. writes female led. Yeah, I think I, I shouldn't say this because it's wrong, but I'm pretty sure she like has a background. Like she was a stripper, like when she was younger, and yeah. she's kind of had this interesting life. And so now, and now she writes screenplays, and she writes these really interesting, like layered kind of female characters. And I think she's actually writing, working on a Madonna movie at the moment. Isn't oh. I feel like I heard that somewhere. Okay. Like she's working Very on a screenplay good. for a Madonna movie, like a biopic or something. So Bridesmaids, Young Adults, definitely check those out. They hold up ten years later. Thanks for joining me, as always, Sarge. Yep. Um, and thanks for joining us at home. You're watching The Film Whisperers on Bent TV.